Hey folks, welcome to part 11 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is going to be, how can you look at underlying data in your workbook or uh, visualization? And you could select multiple correct options here. Um, so is it going to be by, you know, use the download data option in the data pane, use the view data option in the data pane, use the view data option by right clicking a mark, use the download data option by right clicking a mark or use the view data option in the uh, analysis toolbar menu which of these is it going to be um so really it's you know having to choose between two types of options whether it's the download data option or the view data option but also where do you find that option would it be in the data pane by right clicking a mark or the analysis toolbar so we'll walk through each of these step by step together so i'm going to go into tableau over here again first the first option here is to use the download data option in the data pane so let's say you have a simple chart and you're maybe looking at uh, sales by manufacturer, for example. And let's say we want to have a bar chart instead and have it um, oriented this way. And so again, this is the data pane, right? Next to the analytics pane. Am I able to download data? Is there an option, again, to download data if I want to see the underlying data behind whatever's feeding this, right? So, um, well, we have the data source uh, icon over here and there isn't really a download option, um, then you have the search bar where you can search the different fields. You have a filter by um, icon over here. You have a view data icon. And then finally, you are able to create a calculated field parameter, a list of you know different options, a plethora of options, but you don't really have a download data option. So that can't be the correct solution. How about use the view data option in the data pane? So again, this is the data pane. And if you remember, this is where the view data button is. So we can actually click on this and it's going to expose the uh, the underlying data, right? So we're connect we're using t three tables here. Um, and right now it's showing uh, 10,000 rows. We're able to update that down here if we wish. Uh, we could we have different options in terms of showing the field or actually downloading, right? So you do have to be in view data to be able to download. You don't have that option directly from the data pane. So this is definitely one of the correct solutions, right? Using view data in the data pane. How about the second option? Use the view data option by right clicking a mark. So again, what is a mark? It's basically a data point, right? So down here, it'll tell you how many marks appear on your visualization. Right now, it's 183 because that means we're looking at 183 different manufacturers, right? So each of these bars is a mark. So if I right click, do I see view data? Yes, I do. And I can actually click on that and it'll take me to the underlying data behind that mark. Right. So that's very interesting because you can actually drill down or really kind of focus on that one data point. But yes, that's another way to view underlying data by going to uh, a mark, right clicking and then clicking on view data. So uh, the third option here is also correct. How about the fourth option? Use the download data option by right clicking a mark. So if you right click once again, do we have the ability to download? We do not, but again, maybe if you go to view data, you'll have that same option, but it's not gonna appear when you right click, so that can't be the correct solution. Last option, use the view data option in the analysis toolbar menu, right? So on the top here where it says analysis, if we click on that, can we see the view data option? And yes, we do. So again, if I click that, again, it'll take me to, um, you know, the, if I have a particular mark selected, then I, accordingly, it'll show you that information. So yes, that is also a third option. So again, to reader, it's gonna be the second, third, and last option. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, which function do you use to convert a numeric field into a string field in Tableau? So you have maybe like an integer, like a quantity field, um, and you want to convert that to a string, right? So it reads um, like a string and not like in like a number. Would you use the string function, the str function, the varchar or varchar function, or is it going to be cast? Which of these will allow you to convert a number into a string? So let's demonstrate that, okay? So let's, um, what is an example of a numeric field? So maybe we can use quantity like I mentioned here. 
and let's say we just have a number, right? So that's quantity. And you could see that it's appearing. Everything's good to go because we're looking at the sum of quantity, which is, you know, of course, a number. Now, what's the first option here? The string function, right? And you would probably want to do this in a calculated field, but just for the sake of uh, speed, I'm just going to type it in here. So if I type string, right, I find case string, um, and then, you know, let me just drag this over here. It's a little more obvious. I like to do this sometimes just to be able to read more clearly. So now I'm taking the string of the sum of quantity and it doesn't work because it says the, uh, the calculation is invalid. And that's because string is not actually a Tableau supported function. So that's not the correct solution. Next option is STR. What is STR? If I type in STR, you see right there, it returns an expression as a string. You see that tooltip? Returns an expression as a string. If I click that, I actually get data now, right? So now I could see that um, it's taking the string of sum of quantity, basically converting the integer into a string. And that's what we want. So that's the correct solution. But let's try the other ones, right? So how about varchar? So again, instead of string, I'm just gonna type varchar. Notice nothing comes up with the Intel sense, but I will let it go and still it's erroring out because, well, again, that calculation is invalid. Last option is cast. So if I type in cast, uh, again, nothing comes up. If, again, same thing. So that's not an actual function. The only function here that you would use is str. Next question. What is the function of the server menu, right? The server in the toolbar menu um, in Tableau Desktop? So is it to configure data connections, to manage publishing settings, to administer server settings, or to access server logs? So we're gonna go over here to server, and you should be familiar with this enough if you've been you know, publishing dashboards, even if it's a matter of uh, publishing on Tableau Public, but you can sign in, right? You can connect to a server, you can log into a particular site within a server, you can run the optimizer, you can open a workbook, from the server or from you know Tableau Cloud, you can publish the workbook, uh, publish to uh, a data source. You could publish a data source, um, create a user filter, and then you can interact with uh, Tableau Public. But more times than not, you will likely use the publish workbook option, right? So again, a lot of these controls within the server menu, if you really pay attention, if I was to connect, which I'm not authenticated right now, but if I was to connect, I would get a number of options in terms of what is the name of the workbook that I want to publish, what kind of views or uh, uh, what, which worksheets or dashboards I want to publish, do I want to store the credentials within the data source, things of that nature. Um, but again, going into the questions, does it help configure data connections? No, for that you would use the data source tab on you know the bottom left here. Uh, is it to manage publish publishing settings? Yes, absolutely. That's where you would go in terms of, hey, I wanna maybe just publish sheet 19, nothing else, and I wanna rename it to something specific like sum of quantity, whatever it could be, right? Um, whatever you want it to be. So definitely to manage publish settings is what you would use the server menu for. How about to administer server settings? That's not something you would use here. That's more of an administrative function that you would do on the server side um, or uh, even more upstream, but nothing from Tableau desktop. So that can't be the correct solution. How about accessing server logs? Again, that's more of an administrative function, not something you would uh, typically use in the server uh, menu option over here. So the only correct solution here will be the second option to manage published settings. Next question, um, true or false, in Tableau you can convert a discrete date part into a continuous date part. So can you convert a discrete date part into a continuous date part? That is the question. Effectively, if you remember what we just discussed on the last video, um, can you convert a date part which is a blue pill into a date part which is a green pill? That's ultimately what it's asking here. So let's see, let's start with a date, right? In fact, we'll, we'll create a calculated field, right? So I know we have an order date, right? But we're talking about a date part here, right? So we're going to use the date part function, right? And as soon as, not parse, part by the way. And when you type that in, you'll see this tooltip. It'll tell you exactly what you need to enter. So first it wants a date part. In this case, we can do like month or day or year. So I'll just do day. Um, and then this is the second part of the condition, right? We're passing the date and that's going to be my, uh, my calculation there. 
and we're gonna say order day. That's actually gonna be the name of our calculated field. I'm gonna hit apply and you notice it comes down here. Um, and it, I could bring it over here, but again, uh, this really should be a dimension because I wanna be able to see different days in which the order was placed. So I can right click, I can go to convert to dimension, I can take that back out. And now I can drag my order day here. Now you'll see it goes from one through 31 because well, in terms of unique days in which an order was placed, it could be any day from one all, to, all the way to 30 depending on the month, right? So now this is a blue pill, which again, without me even right clicking, you should know that means this is discrete, right? So the question is, now that I have uh, a date part, um, which was con uh, which we, which is discrete, can I convert that into a continuous date part? So if I right click, can I make this continuous? Yes, I can. It, do it does change the under visualization because now you're seeing a bunch of get bars, uh, but that's because we're now working with a measure. But the long story short, we were able, because this is uh, a date part still, we were able to convert a date part, which was discrete to continuous. So in Tableau, you can convert a discrete date part into a continuous date part. This is true. So that's gonna be the solution over here. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect and that's a wrap thank you guys so much for watching hope you found the video helpful as always be sure to like the video if you do enjoy videos like this consider subscribing if you haven't already and of course as always i will catch you on the next one thank you for watching